1972, British cybernetician Stafford Beer published the first edition of Brain of the Firm. In it, Beer recounts conversation he had with Chilean finance minister Fernando Flores. At the time, Chile was in a state of great turmoil, and Flores and Beer were attempting to completely redesign the country's political and economic structures. Such a complicated process, Flores argued, would require a kind of manual which laid out the important principles of this new government in a way that would be easy for the general public to understand. Beer eventually settled on five statements. These would be the keys to building a cybernetic government. He then further simplified these ideas, even going so far as to draw cartoons to help make the principles more accessible. The five statements were 1. The government is the people's help. 2. To help means to help now. 3. The road to help has signposts. 4. Help is a name and a face. 5. The future starts today. One of Beer's most famous contributions to cybernetics and the management of organisations is the viable system model. The viable system model encapsulates Beer's five principles for the people toward good government and could potentially function as a guide for the construction of more just and emancipated social structures and workplaces, the building blocks for a better future. A system is simply a collection of interacting parts that come together to make a larger whole. A cell is an example of a system, as is a human being, a factory, an economy, or a government. The viable system model stands in contrast to many modern human-made systems. It attempts to remove the rigid, hierarchical structures of top-down decision-making without falling victim to the disarray of complete decentralization. To Beer, the top-down approach of, say, a governmental hierarchy is as unintuitive as it is inefficient. The chain of command often winds up becoming less a way of understanding the actual functioning of a system and more a roadmap for who gets blamed for what. Be recognised that hierarchy obstructs productivity and freedom. So he created the viable systems model in part to model a system that balanced autonomy with cohesion. The viable system must be viewed as three main parts interacting with each other. Operations, metasystem and environment. Operations carry out all the basic work of the system. The metasystem ensures the cooperation, integration and forward planning of the entire system. And the environment is simply the external conditions the system as a whole operates within. The viable system can be broken down into five internal systems that carry out the various functions the system requires to operate. To help us understand the system, let us use the human body as an example of a viable system. But as we go through the structure of the viable systems model, keep in mind that these structures can be applied to everything from a business to a political party. First, there is system one. In a body, system one would consist of the limbs, internal and sensory organs of the individual. The lungs, heart and eyes would all be part of system one. These systems, Beer says, all operate essentially autonomously and directly monitor and engage with the environment. For example, when walking up a steep hill, the heart will respond to the difficulty of the climb by beating faster without direct intervention. System two is a cybernetic spine. It is a system of communication, stability and conflict resolution. It facilitates communication between various aspects of System 1, as well as transmitting data deemed important and necessary upwards to System 3. System 3 is comparable to the medulla, cerebellum and pons of the brain. It maintains the operation of each system within System 1 as well as their interactions. Because it is able to view the organism in its totality, System 3 is uniquely qualified to help in the coordination of the day-to-day -day management of all operations. To maintain autonomy, System 3 only receives data deemed necessary for macroscopic management. All other management is devolved to the systems inside of System 1. Importantly, System 3 is also responsible for filtering all data upwards towards management. Systems 4 and 5 are different to those already mentioned. They exist outside of the day-to-day -day operations of System 1, 2 and 3. They play more of a managerial role. 
System 4 is the all-important link between autonomy and control. It is akin to the diencephalon, basal ganglia, and third ventricle of the brain. Like System 1, System 4 directly monitors the external environment and creates plans for the future of the organism. It sends this information to System 3, which then sends the appropriate information to the relevant operation centres of System 1. System 4 is crucially not directly dictating policy to System 3, however. While standards must be helped to, if the system as a whole is to continue to function smoothly, they maintain that System 3 and 4 are partners in an ongoing conversation, not bosses and subordinates in the typical sense. System 4 also receives and sends information to the final system, System 5. This is the top of the system, the cerebral cortex. System 5 maintains the identity of the organism and sets policy for the system to work toward. It also resolves conflicts between System 3 and 4. Importantly, Beer also designed a mode of communication in the viable systems model called an algodonic signal. Literally pain pleasure, the algodonic signal makes it possible for any component part of System 1 to immediately communicate vertically to Systems 3, 4 and 5 without any of the lag that would come with traditional hierarchical structures. Think of this like burning your hand on a stovetop. The algodonic signal to the brain causes us to flinch and quickly move our hand, but also to turn the heat down so it doesn't happen again. Finally, it is crucial to note that the viable system model is fully recursive in its structure. Each subset of system one is organized along the same principles as the system as a whole, meaning each firm, workplace or team winds up having the same democratic structure as the greater economy. In biological terms, we can see that the heart is made up of a multitude of individual cells. To Bia, these cells all operate in a similar fashion to the human body system as a whole. These levels of recursion make it easy for any single entity in the system to relate to and understand the structure of any other part of the system, because the rules are all the same. Inside every system, we find many other smaller systems all following the same principles and operating along the same lines. Hopefully, it is easy to see how the viable system model could be used to organize any number of systems. To be a, the system that works best is a system that operates almost entirely autonomously and only sends information vertically when it must. For example, in Beer's estimation, system one, the factory floor, is best left to organize itself along democratic, non-hierarchical lines. The only time a business should have to send for help from higher management is when there is a problem. Essentially, the workers should organize themselves to boost productivity and create new, less exploitative social relations. It is easy to see how this balance of freedom and responsible management was attractive to Salvador Allende, the former socialist president of Chile, when he was attempting his restructuring of the Chilean economy and its government. Allende wanted to build a society that allowed for maximum social liberty, but he also wanted to bolster the economy and end Chile's dependency on exploitative entities. The ideas behind Beer's cybernetics are central to a brighter future, one free of the limits of not only the market form, but of the bureaucratic failings of authoritarian hierarchies. Capitalist markets rely on exploitation, coercion and brutality. They cannot be expected to correct their errors before environmental and social degradation lead to collapse. As we look to build organisations that connect us as real power to take control of our collective future, we must create viable systems that do not simply recreate the failings we claim to be moving beyond. A better future is not only possible, it is entirely necessary.